Hello everyone, welcome back. In today's lecture, we'll be discussing about the side effects of NSAIDs. See, in previous video, we discussed about the arachidonic acid pathway, Cox enzymes, and the mechanism of action of NSAIDs. In continuation to that, we'll be discussing the side effects of NSAIDs in this video. So let's start. See, this we have seen in previous video that whenever the inflammatory reaction occurs, it causes the release of phospholipase A2. And this enzyme, it converts a membrane phospholipids into arachidonic acid. And this arachidonic acid, it's a substrate of two enzymes, that is 5-lipooxygenase and cyclooxygenase. This lipooxygenase enzyme, it causes the conversion of arachidonic acid into leukotrienes and the cyclooxygenase, it causes the conversion of arachidonic acid into prostaglandins. This cyclooxygenase enzyme, it exists in two isoenzyme forms, that is COX-1 and COX-2. And this we have already seen that NSAIDs, they work by inhibiting the action of cyclooxygenase enzyme. So when they inhibit the cyclooxygenase, they inhibit the production of prostaglandins. And these NSAIDs, they can be of two types, that is non-selective COX inhibitors when they are acting on both COX-1 and 2, or they can be selective COX-2 inhibitor. Clear? So according to their mechanism of action, these NSAIDs, they produce their effects and side effects. The effects of NSAIDs we have already seen in our previous video. Now let's see the side effects of these COX inhibitors or NSAIDs. Now if we look at the NSAID side effects, the side effects, they depend on the type of COX inhibitor used. Basically, the NSAIDs, they produce action on gastrointestinal mucosa, kidney, and cardiovascular system. How? As we know, the COX-1, it is responsible for release of prostaglandin E2, that is PGE2 and PGI2, which causes the gastric protection by increasing the mucosal secretion, increasing the bicarbonate content, and by increasing the mucosal blood flow. So when NSAIDs, they act on COX-1 enzymes, they inhibit the production of this prostaglandin E2. And by inhibition of its production, there will be inhibition of all these actions resulting in peptic ulcers and gastrointestinal bleeding. Clear? Therefore, in patients with gastrointestinal bleeding or ulcers, if NSAIDs are required, we give selectively COX-2 inhibitors, for example, celecoxib, with minimal possible dose. Now, if we look at the renal effects of NSAIDs, basically COX inhibitor that is non-specific and COX-2 specific inhibitors, both they have adverse effect on the kidney. How? See, basically the prostaglandins PGE2 and prostacyclines, they play an important role in regulation of renal hemodynamics, renal salts and water excretion. So whenever there is decrease in effective circulatory volume, they cause vasodilation resulting in the increase in the renal blood flow and glomerular filtration rate. Clear? To maintain the renal hemodynamics, they cause excretion of sodium ion and water excretion. So looking at the action of prostaglandin and prostacycline, we can say that COX inhibitors, that is, both non-specific NSAIDs and COX-2 inhibitors, they can have adverse effect on kidney because when both COX-1 and 2, they get inhibited, there won't be the production of prostaglandin E2 and I2, that is prostacyclines. And this can lead to increased sodium and water retention, hypertension, and disturbance in hemodynamic action of prostaglandins resulting in acute kidney injury or renal failure. And if we look at the effects of COX inhibitors on the cardiovascular system, first of all, let's see the actions of prostaglandins, that is prostacycline and thromboxin A2 on vascular system. See the prostacycline, it causes vasodilation and it inhibits the platelet aggregation. Whereas thromboxane, it causes platelet aggregation and vasoconstriction. 
so by looking at these actions we can say that selective cox2 inhibitors they increase the risk of myocardial infarction and stroke this action of cox2 inhibitors is because of inhibition of prostacyclines which cause vasodilation and inhibition of platelet aggregation so when prostacyclines they are inhibited there will be vasoconstriction and platelet aggregation resulting in increase in the chance of stroke and myocardial infarction whereas cox1 inhibitors they inhibit thromboxin a2 thromboxin a2 it causes platelet aggregation and vasoconstriction so inhibition of thromboxin a2 it does not cause much effect on cardiovascular system rather it's a beneficial effect on coronary artery disease because there will be inhibition of thromboxin a2 which causes platelet aggregation and vasoconstriction so these actions they won't be able to take place clear so from this we can also see that cox2 inhibitors they have more chances of stroke and myocardial infarction clear now let's summarize the side effects of nsaids which act by inhibiting the cox1 and cox2 enzymes thereby inhibiting the production of prostaglandins on gastrointestinal activity they can cause dyspepsia gastrointestinal ulcers gastrointestinal bleeding and perforation on cardiovascular system they can cause edema hypertension congestive heart failure myocardial infarction stroke and other thrombotic events on renal system they can cause electrolyte imbalance sodium retention edema reduced gfr nephrotic syndrome acute interstitial nephritis renal papillary necrosis chronic kidney disease so this was all about the side effects of nsaids i hope you understood the mechanism of action effects and side effects of nsaids kindly subscribe my channel for more such videos thanks for watching take care and goodbye